Hey, Cypher here. This is the third episode of a series on the history of California. You can click here to begin that series from the beginning, or here to see the previous episode. Alta California had remained a remote outpost in the Spanish Empire throughout the first 50 years since the conquest by Portola. When Mexico achieved independence from Spain after a decade of warfare in 1821, both Alta and Baja California were given to the new Mexican Empire, soon to be replaced by a republic. Despite the changeover, Mexico administered the distant territory virtually the same as Spain, and that is hardly at all. It fell on local authorities to run things without the input from the federal government. The citizens who resided in Alta California existed in a semi-lawless state. You see, Spain had created a system of granting land to citizens back in the 1780s. They would give these huge properties to people to ranch cattle, called ranchos. These grants were so big that entire cities in California today sit within one apiece. The first one, in 1784, was 48,000 acres. A thousand acre grant was a tiny one for the time. The Californios who were granted land, called rancheros, were basically feudal lords of their vast swaths of land. These rancheros would hire field hands to help on the ranch, called vaqueros. Vaqueros were often American Indians from the surrounding area, but most ranchos had to deal with Indian raiding too. A group called Los Chaguanosos, which was really just random frontiersmen and Indians who did not make a coherent group, made several daring raids into Alta California from New Mexico, stealing thousands of cattle and horses, taking them back across the Mojave Desert. Rancheros had to fend for themselves. There was a legal system, where an elected person would be judge, jury, and sheriff all in one. I am the law. Called the alcalde. So if there was ever a problem, an alcalde would come out and preside over some arguments and pronounce judgment. There just weren't enough people to have a more advanced system than that. People were coming to Alta California, just not that many Mexicans. There were some expeditions from Mexico, but much of the new population growth came from foreigners. Some trailblazers, who were mostly fur trappers, found land routes to get to Alta California. So many famous mountain men were part of this, especially John C. Fremont, who made three expeditions to California. He'll come up again in the next episode. People made the trek over the Oregon Trail and the Old Spanish Trail from the United States to get land for themselves. You remember that whole thing about the Russians prompting the settling of Alta California back in episode 1? Well, they set up an outpost in Alta California called Fort Ross in 1812. Foreigners were encroaching on Alta Californian land almost constantly, simply for what was sometimes called the California Fur Rush. The largest proportion of settlers did not come over land though. There was a huge amount of trade in otter pelts and cow hides coming from the seas. Ships would trade for pelts and hides before leaving for Hawaii and ultimately Canton in China. This has been called the Triangle Trade of the Pacific. Since there was no one close enough to ship meat, the cows were not used for beef, just their pelts and the tallow that was made out of their fat. Rancheros ate fairly well because of all the excess meat. Because of all this trade, which actually predated the Mexican government, non-Mexicans were a large proportion of the new immigrants coming to Alta California. This of course caused tension. People argued about whether the Mexican government was doing anything for them as early as the Mexican government assumed power. Mexico City had a lot more to be concerned with than its most distant and remote colony. The country was ravaged by civil wars and secessionists for decades after gaining independence. Because of this, the Mexican government failed to pay soldiers stationed in Alta California on a regular basis. As this neglect set in, there were several rebellions in the late 1820s and 1830s by small bands of Californios. They started by trying to reunify with Spain in 1828. After several minor rebellions, the Mexican government appointed an unpopular governor named Manuel Victoria. 
A minor revolution removed him from power in 1831, after two armies faced off in a very silly battle. This left Alta California in a state of anarchy for three years, until a general named Figueroa captured the capital of Monterey again. Finally, after all of this, a new governor was so unpopular that he fled Alta California and his replacement was overthrown by another revolution. This revolution was different because it declared independence from Mexico in 1836. It was led by Juan Batista Alvarado, who would remain governor for most of the rest of the Mexican period. We still call 1836 to 1846 the Mexican period, despite the fact that Alta California was essentially an independent state, with its own Lone Star flag that actually predates Texas's more famous Bonnie Blue flag. The Mexican government obviously didn't want Alta California to secede. First, they appointed a new governor named Carlos Antonio Carrillo. After a brief amount of fighting, they came to a settlement and Alvarado remained governor of an autonomous California. Then came General Mitchell Torrena from Mexico, who tried to capture the state and met some success. But when the convicted criminals that made up some of his army plundered too much of Monterey, Baches. We ain't got no badges. We don't need no badges. I don't have to show you any stinking badges. They were defeated militarily, again, by Alvarado's forces in 1845. Alvarado ceded his power to another governor who seemed amenable to everyone, named Pio Pico. He would not have much of a chance. His government would be overthrown in 1846 by the Bear Flag Revolt, making him the last Mexican governor. So next time, we'll be covering the origins of that conflict and the California War, which made the autonomous state of Alta California into the US state of California. Be sure to subscribe for that, and I'll see you next time. It was led by Juan Bet... Bat Batista. Good lord. Juan Batista Alvarado. Why am I getting these names wrong? I said them a million times. Called an Al Qaeda. <laughs> Called an Al Qaeda. <laughs> yeah, that, that's a. Uh, that's what they called him. <laughs>